who do I have in front of me here at all? Uh, Kenneth Nash. Kenneth Nash. And Kenneth, you were born and bred here in Branch, were you? Yeah, born in Branch, yeah. Born in Branch. Yeah. And what was your your your, your father's name? Sarah Nash. Sarah Nash. Yes. And your mother, where? Um, mother was Isabella Nash. Isabella Nash. Yes. And were, they were both from Branch, were they? They're both from Branch, yes. Right, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And your father, your father used to sing, was that right? Yes, he used to sing and dance, yeah. 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 And he, you, you were telling me before he had little kind of unusual rhymes or sayings he had. Have you picked up from him, did you? Uh, yes, I often heard him saying them, yes. Yeah. Yes. What was the one about the, there was one about a, a, um, someone's field, was that one? A little, a little rhyme you had. Well, uh, are you talking about uh, two little jobbers, say? Eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, used to, he used to sing that one, yeah, two little jobbers, say, eh? daily's plot. Two little jobbers, say, eh? daily's plot. With a rebo bell and a bow ball day. Ozzy pass and Nero may, say, poly po gay. And he would change that to two little juki say, or, you know, different. Every time he sing a bit, probably a different word in it, right? And your father sang that? Yes, he would sing that one, yeah. Well, there's other people in Brian Sanger too, right? Yeah. And you no, you no idea what it meant? No. No, I don't know what it meant, no. Not sure. No. But I think there was, there was chickens or something in it because he called it chickens or like a jobbers. I think I remember asking what a jobber was. He said it was or like a rooster or something like that, right? So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, right? Good Lord. Yeah. And it was just a sound that you heard and you picked up from your father? The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had another one for me as well. One day you were saying when you were called and people picking for a game. How how did that one go? Oh yeah, we had we had some uh, yeah we had some rhymes that we used to use, right? Yeah. Like uh, we would say that one. Uh, Eka back a soda cracker. Eka back a boo. Eka back a soda cracker. And out goes you. That was one of them, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, there is more, but thinking of them right away now is a yeah. is another right? Do you remember the one that Annie Annie Nash had the other day? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother used to do one, and Annie Nash had one, yes. Uh, i got to think of it now. Ogre, 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 A. Filthy Fonsons, Nicholas John. Cooper, Copper, Irish Mary. Sticklin, Stacklin, Buck. But I've, I've learned that that was probably a one that they use in a game when they're choosing a leader, right? So that was one of them. And your mother used to do that for you, was that right? Yes, mother used to. Uh, well, mostly she'd be washing your hair or combing your hair, and she'd be singing that one, right? So, would you sing it? Say it for me again, would you? Ogre, 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 a filthy fountains, Nicholas John, Cooper, Copper, Orange Mary, Sticklin, Stacklin, Buck. Oh, but uh, Annie had a little different version of that, right? And you have no, no idea what that means. No. 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 But you heard it from your mother. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There was one thing you were saying to me last night as well. When you'd be calling in the sheep, what would you say here? Well, branch guard you'd say, gin, 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 here, gin, here, gin, 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 right? And they'd be calling in the sheep, yeah. And there was other people that had a different saying? Yeah, over St. Bride's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they used to say, here, goochie, 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 goochie. So, you know, I've heard people in St. Bride's saying that. So, I don't know if everybody said it, but there were some people, right? Here, goochie, 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 goochie. Yes, yes. And yours was? Here, gin, 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 gin. For calling in the sheep? Yes. Yeah. What would you say when you're calling in the hen? Uh, most of us always heard people saying, here, juk, 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 juk. That's, that's about it, I think. Juk, 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 juk. Yeah. Was it chuk chuk or juk, juk? Well, depending on, people say fast, so yeah, yeah. it's hard to recognize exactly what they're saying, right? Yeah. But it always sounds like, here, juk, 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 juk. And did you call hens chuckies? Uh, no, my, I don't know what the older people called them. The older people had different names on things, right? Mm. But we just called them hens or roosters, that was it. Yeah. yeah. You said sometimes you, you would hear the older people say a, a turnip wouldn't be a turnip. Well, I have mean, different pronunciations of it, right? Yeah. Turnip, turn, you know. Was it term, term? Well, some people would, would say turnip. Some people would say, uh, oh, cow, cow turnips or something like that, right? Yeah. But Did you ever hear them call it turnips? Turnips. 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 Uh, 
I'm not, I don't remember what we call them. No, no. No. No, we always call them tur- turnips. Turnips. Yeah. And you were telling me that there was neighbours used to call potatoes a different name here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They used to call them praties. The neighbours called them praties. Praties. Yes. Yeah. 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 And there's a gas, isn't it? You should, you'd, uh, you'd still grow potatoes here, wouldn't you? Yes, we still grow potatoes here, yes. Yeah. yeah. And here in Branch, you plant, you set beds, don't you? Beds of potatoes, yes. Yeah. And down in Point Lance, they don't say beds. They say ridges. Yes, well, some people do say ridges. Yeah, but we we call them beds here. But some people do say ridges. Yeah. Ridges of potatoes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Isn't it gas? Isn't it? Yeah. You were telling me as well, even for cutting for for cutting the hay years ago, you'd have cocks of hay here, wouldn't you? Uh, cocks of hay. Yes, when you're making up the hay, you know, you're, you're gathering in the hay in the evening. If it's going to be wet and the hay's not dry, dry enough to haul home, you 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 make up cocks of hay so it didn't get too wet mm-hmm. when there weren't rain coming, right? Yeah. yeah. So the you know, you spread it out then when they get fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you spread it out. Uh, but when we cut the hay, first, you know, you're cutting the hay with a side or, or a machine. It was called swarts of hay. So then you, you know, you let it probably dry for a little bit, then you spread out swarts of hay when you get fine weather. Then you turn it, you know, and uh, if it was dry enough, you haul it in. And if it, if it wasn't, you make it up into cocks of hay and, until it was dry enough to spread out again, right? And you were telling me last night about about the stone the hay. Yes, yeah, yeah. We just yeah stone stone hay in the in the barns in the stable. Yeah, no, like uh, yeah, we be storing the hay. Yeah. Yeah. No, people say we store it in the no up on the loft for now. Yeah. Put it down in the put it down in the bog afterwards, right? Yeah. yeah, they often do that. Yeah, and we'd have to uh, sometimes on the last of it, trying to make enough room for all the hay to go in, right? You know, you'd have to stag it in, right? Stag it in tight, so you have enough room for the hay. To stag it in. Stag it in, yes. And the word before it was to st- just was to sto- store. Store the hay. Yeah. It wasn't stone hay. It was store the hay. Store the hay. Yeah. Yeah. Store yeah. the hay. Yeah. Store yes. The hay. Yeah. Yeah. I had to store the hay. And we used salt, on the hay, when the hay was a little bit, you know, like if they felt it wasn't really dry enough. They would sprinkle salt. My father always said to uh, prevent it from catching fire, they believed. Yeah. A bit of salt. Yes. And it was up in the hayloft too, that's where they kept her jam for the winter. Yeah, when they picked the berries in the fall of the year, especially partridge berries. Like we used to go as a as a bunch of kids with our parents and we gone all day. And you have an old hundred pound flour sack and you would stay all day until that sack was filled with partridge berries. And you throw it up on his shoulders, and we walk back on the branch and to make jam out of it. And uh, they had bottles, and that was stored up on the, on the hayloft for the winter months. And you were telling me before as well that, say, if an old person was sick here, they'd go, they'd shoot him a partridge. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, they would, yes. A lot of people would go with their gun in the winter and try to find a partridge to shoot if a person was sick, and they, they believed the strength was in the soup from the partridge. To bring the person back, him back to strength. And it was a local pronunciation for partridge as well. Well, well, most people say partridge. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the correct name is par partridge. Yeah. And, uh, well, we get the, we get the rock. Well, rock ptarmigan here and the willow ptarmigan. We get both kinds. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of rocks, there, did you ever come across the saying where did the the cold stone to be in the water? Yes. I've heard that in the summertime, exactly the date, I'm not sure, but I believe it's sometime in June. Like my father and him said, you cannot go swim in the rivers or in the salt water yet because stone is not in the water. You know, what it meant exactly, I'm not sure, but there was a time for that. I heard that lots of times. And when that stone would go in, then you... Well, it meant it was warm enough, really, to go in the water, safe to go in then, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you had that same thing at, at home as well with the different times of the year with like a, a broom in the month of May. Did you hear the old people saying that? Yes, yes, I've heard that, that yes. I heard my wife still talking about a hey, broom and buying a map at just, you know, certain times of the year, right? You know, either good luck or bad luck to buy them. But you'd have talked to the women more about that. Didn't, you wouldn't yeah. have that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you have to wonder as well about the cure for the, the cure for the bit of snow in May? Did you have that? Yes, I've, I heard that, yes. People used to gather snow in May, right? Yeah. What would you use it for, Kenneth? Well, some people just use it for sore eyes. 
That's right. Not, not a lot of people used to use it for it. You were telling me one day as well about uh, cures for warts as a child. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I remember having warts on my fingers. Yeah, most of used to, I think we used to pick them up from the, there's a, there's a, a stinger that grows close around the area, right? And there's, and there's some buds and stuff to be on among those stingers. And we'd be playing there, you know. But, well, that's where our parents said we used to pick up the wart from. I don't know if it was or not, right? But anyway, I did have a lot of warts on my hand one day, and uh, I was showing to my mother, right? And some were getting sore. And uh, so she, t- she sent me up to her cousin, Mr. Alan Power, and he, she said, he'll, he'll cure your warts for you, right? So she said, go on up, see him. And I went up and showed him my hand, right? So he said, I'll cure, cure them for you. And I was only young, so, uh, you know, I didn't really know what it was about. But anyway, uh, he counted the warts on my hands, and he had a piece of chalk or something there, you know, and, he, and he put the marks on the inside of his oven with, with that, right? And uh, he said a prayer over my hand, and he said, uh, he said, when all those uh, marks are gone off of the oven now, he said, your warts will be gone. But I didn't think much of it afterwards. I never th- even thought of it. But I did realize one day, I looked at my hand, and there was no warts. And I said to my mother about it, right? And she said, why don't you go up to his house and see if all the marks are gone off of the oven? So I did. The marks were gone. My warts were gone. So I don't know how that happened because I wasn't thinking about it. So uh, some people say it was just a belief, but it wasn't because I wasn't even thinking about it. So I don't know what happened, right? But it did work, whatever it was. Yeah. Did you ever hear them with a piece of straw? Touching them with a piece of straw? Heard that around here? Mm, I didn't anyway. There could be other people here, but yeah, yeah. yeah no. The belief is mad, Kenneth, isn't it? I, I've noticed inside in your house there, you've got loads of little dot, dots of wax on your tumble dryer and washing machine at the back. Yes, yes. Well, what's that for? Yeah, that, that's a belief that's among all of us here in Branch, right? It was the, the holy candle. Get the candle blessed and you light the candle and you, and you use the drops in the sign of a cross. And that was believed to protect your house and your property. Like uh, the older people would have it like out on their, in a barn. And we we used it around our fuse box and and our washers and dryer and you know, on the head of the bed, you know it was pretty well used everywhere, you know as a sign of protection. So that's on the Candlemas Day on the second of February. Yes, that's mostly when you do that. Yes, when you get a new candle blessed by the priest and yeah, you bring them home and. And you light them and you drop the four little dots. Yes, in the sign of a cross, the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Ghost, Amen. So yeah. to go on your washer, your dryer, the head of your bed, uh, sometimes out in the, uh, on the animals, you ever see it being put Well, in? I, no, but I did see it being put in the, in the, in the barn. In the barn. Uh, some part of the barn, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you, was it ever put on your shoulder? On yes. The... I remember when I was young, it was put on the shoulder of a, of a coat that you'd be wearing. My mother used to do it, right? But I think she used to protect, for protection, we'd be going uh, out and hunting in different places, you know. And, you'd, and regardless... You'd, you'd see that clear as day. You wouldn't. You, you wouldn't cover it up. Or no, 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 no. On your hats as well. And you see them on the hats and the hard hats from it. Yeah, yes. It was on some of the hats years ago. I remember when I was small. I remember some people used to put them on the inside of their cap. You know, yeah. Lord. And another thing, which your your brother-in-law beside you here does, who's telling me you probably do it as well. He blessed the axe or blessed the chainsaw. Uh, yes, the axe was blessed. Yeah, the axe used to be blessed. But there's no chainsaws back in my time. It was right, yeah. all axes and box axes. Yeah. You know, so, yes, the axe was blessed for sure. And would, if, I was, if you were looking up an axe there now today, would you do, do that still at all now? Uh, not as, no, not now, because we, we have, everybody uses chainsaws now. Yeah. Axe is not used very much, yeah. you know. Yeah. Would you bless the chainsaw? Uh, well, some people still do. I haven't done it recently, no. But like the people here that do do it, yeah. they use the chainsaw a lot. Yeah. Like I don't burn wood, so I don't use chainsaw very much. Okay, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another thing you were telling me there as well, whatever you were doing, you were saying salt was a there was a there was a great belief in salt. If your mother, your, you said the old people would put salt on top of the hay. Yes. To stop yeah. it going on fire. <clears throat> yeah, but that's what my father used to say. I used to ask him why you use salt. Right, he said to keep it cool. Ooh. Yeah, so I wouldn't, you know, be afraid something it would ignite or something, because green grass would get so hot, the mm-hmm. hay would get hot, right? How much salt would you put on it? Oh, just a sprinkle every now and then, right? You know, every time putting in so much hay, and just a uh, sprinkle around a few fistfuls. 
Yeah. Did you did you have the blessed salt tradition here where you get salt blessed by the priest? Not that I recall, no. Oh. No. 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 You were telling me that another thing if you, you saw that being done was when the potatoes would be up, you could only get a bucket of seawater. Well, mostly for the cabbage. Cabbage? Yes. So it was to keep the snails from eating up the cabbage, right? Yeah, the old people years ago, I haven't seen it done recently, but they would go down to the land watch take because everybody lives close to the salt water and bring up water, buckets of water, and get a green bush. And they would flick a bit of salt water, just just, just enough that it wouldn't do damage to the, to the cabbage. And... Uh, yeah, and it was help with snails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you remember when you were years ago when you were cutting the? Did you know? You know when you'd be saving your seed potatoes, and you'd be saving the, you'd be splitting the eyes sometimes to get two, or maybe three. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever have a name on the little bit of leftover potato? Did you call it a scallop or a scallop or? Uh, I don't know. They used to call it something. I'm not quite sure what it was called, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I think mostly I always heard just potato skins. Potato skins. Yeah, but there was names here in Brent's, but uh, mm. you know. Did you did you bless the potatoes when they were putting them in? Uh, we don't. I don't now. No. no. Did the old people? Yeah, but they they used to bless almost everything, right? <laughs> yeah, because they did for, you know, they believed in that, you know, believed in their faith. And even the bread they were making, the bread that always. They always put on a cross on it, yes, and making their bread also. I do believe in that. And did your mother have um, make fresh butter? In it? Uh, n- not in my day, uh, no. Probably in her day, today, but not in my day, right? Yeah. yeah, but they baked a lot of bread. Yeah. yeah. My mother and I baked bread, like when we had when the large family was home, they baked bread seven days a week. Yeah. So I just put it in the rice in the, in the evening and then they put it in the oven the next morning. So pretty much every day of the week. Did you remember your mother and sprinkling the holy water up around the corners of the house, going to bed or anything like that? Or? Uh, not all the time, no, but I, I did see her sprinkle holy water. Yeah. Like, you know, when they get their hands on something, right? yeah. they were sprinkled. They believed in that. And you would have a piece of blessed pan by your fuse box inside in the house, wouldn't you? Yes, yes, yeah. That came when electricity came. Yeah, people were nervous of it. They were kind of afraid of electricity. It was new to them, and they were afraid of something catching fire. And that's common around this area? Yes, yeah. And a lot of people, yeah, put the, the holy palm, yeah. And it's common at home in Wexford as well. It was common. The older people did it in Wexford, where I grew up. Yeah. And you'd put the blessed palm in the car as well, would you? Yes, yeah. Peace in the car, yeah. Along with medals. There's always a medal or a scaffolder mm. in the car. And most of the people, even the young people around here, they wear they wear uh, medals or scafflers inside their clothes. Mm. Uh, that belief is still here. Mm. Yeah. And... Piece of blessed palm again over the door of the house. Over, yes. Oil, was it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Some people will make that into a sign of a cross and yeah. and put it there, right? To twist it around. Yeah. Again, yeah. Make a sign of a cross there. Yeah. Put it up over the door, right? Yeah. A great belief in that. And you were saying years ago you saw a type of a, a Saint Bridges cross here, was there, or a type of a cross, was there? Yeah. Yes, I remember seeing it, but they're they weren't common, but I did see them in a couple of houses, you know. And what were they made of? Well, you know, it's a long time ago, so, you know, I, I don't know where they, where they made out of riches, but uh, there's another type of thing, uh, uh, plant that we have here, right? We used to call them flaggers, you know, and uh, I, I, I thought that's what they were made of, right? It's, you know, it's so long ago, it's hard to remember exactly, but, you know. And would it be bent and twisted like the same, because you know what the same British cross looks like. Yes. You've yeah. seen them in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it was bent and made like a cross, but, uh, you know, it's a long time ago. It's hard to be, because St. Bridget's Cross, I've seen it, but I've seen pictures of it too. Mm. And, you know, your memories could get mixed up, right? Yeah, yeah. And one thing as well, whatever, was you didn't fish, did you? Oh, I fished, yes. You fished? Yes. And I fished back in, uh, God, back in, uh, I guess, early... I don't know, in the seventies, I guess. I fished for a while. I fished on a long liner yeah. for one year. I fished on a small boat in St. Bride's for another year. Yeah. And did you ever see the the old people or the people going out? You never. You'd always turn the boat with the sun. Yes. Yeah. I still carry that forward into my work. When we have our safety meetings, and we do our exercises, like I 
get everybody to go following the song. I don't like the people to go against the song when they're doing that now. So when we're ever, like a flex and stretch, it's called that safety, you know, for safety purposes at work, I ask everybody to follow the song. Yeah, go. And for someone who doesn't know what you mean, so say we were out in the boat and the sun would be over here to your right, you wouldn't come around, you'd, you'd, you'd come this way to it, would you? Clockwise. Yeah, you follow the sun, yes, yeah, I would. You turn, well, it's like I'm going clockwise. Yeah. You can follow the clock. Yeah. Because the clock follows the sun. Yeah. So, yeah, and that was used, that's still used. Anybody sees anyone turning, right? You know, yeah, but it was, I guess there is superstitions, right? There's people here, even to this day, right? There was people here that would turn around and go back home if they were going to visit their neighbor and there was a black cat crossed them off. They would turn around and go back home. Or walking under a ladder, they would not walk under a ladder. Or meet somebody on the stairs. So there's a lot of people even now who would not meet somebody on the stairs with bad luck. They wait for a person to go up or down. Or step over a baby. Is that that one? Uh, oh yeah, they would say that was top growth, right? They would never let anybody step over a child on the floor. They figured that would stop the growth of the child. So I know sir, this morning my little one in your house here, she had her little leggings on her the wrong way around. And what did you say? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm not sure now. Was it late mother? It was bad luck to change him. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. That's, yeah. What the, that's what they said, it would be bad luck to change him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, your wife said it. Yeah, Jackie said it. Jackie yeah. said it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And tell me this thing as well. Did you ever as well? You have the thing where if you meet a, a crow, one crow. Yeah, you put the sign across. Yeah, when we're driving along, yeah, my wife always does it, right? Yeah, we meet one crow, the sign across, right? On the crow. On the crow, yeah. And would you bless yourself then as well? Yeah, well, we, uh, some people do. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you will, but we always bless ourselves now when we're passing a graveyard or a church. Always bless ourselves. Bless that was common, right? Yeah. yeah. But years ago, when we when we wore hats, like if a priest came around the community, right, you always tip your hat yeah. to the priest to acknowledge him, right? Yeah. yeah, that was common too, but not so much anymore, right? And if you see one crow, it's bad luck. If you see two crows, it's good luck, isn't that right? Yeah, one for sorrow, two for joy, right? Yeah. Three for a wedding, four for a boy, five for silver and six for gold, and seven for the story never to be told. And we have that in Ireland, but we have the magpie. But you don't, you don't have magpies here, so no. you just do the di different version of it. Yeah, no, yeah. I've never seen a magpie until I went to Ireland. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, isn't it? There was other, other, other things as well. Are you still okay to talk? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Um, with, the, with, the, with the magpies. Do you ever see the, the fishermen putting a little bottle of holy water up in the stem, the boat? Uh, it's, it's not everybody used to do it, but some people used to do it. Yeah. Would it be a little, how big would the bottle be, have you seen, have you seen But, but not, re not in recent days. Maybe there is some long learners that still, that still carry it. Don't, I don't know, for sure. Because mm. I haven't been fishing, but you know, years ago, you know, they would you know, carry a bottle of holy water, right? Yeah. It's an interesting, lo loads of those things, they're, they're shared between both of us. We, 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 you do things that we do. Yeah. Another thing you were saying, I was talking to you last night, we were saying about... Uh, in the foundations of houses, maybe a little medal or a coin. Or yes, yeah. Did you have you seen that or heard of that? Uh, well, when we'd be breaking up old, old uh, foundations from years ago, yeah, people would say you probably find a medal here, right, or a coin. It's the people used to do it, you know. So it was done years ago. Yes. For a bit of luck. Uh, yes, so I guess for protection and things like that. Protection, yeah. yeah. It's a lot about protection, wasn't it? A lot about protection from the evil. Yeah, they, they they believe in, you know, in evil. Yeah. yeah. You were telling me before as well, aside from all the customs and traditions, the fairies also came over here with you and your stories. Yes, they said that they said there was fairies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, but uh, there was different stories here in Branch about fairies, right? People believe in seeing children and things like that, but there was one story here in Branch, where. Uh, <coughs> There was a child born and a man and a wife were over at, at the hay late in the evening, just before dark. Yeah, and uh, the woman had her baby down the bottom of the meadow. It was gone up on a hill. And when she went down to pick up the baby, she sung out to her husband. She said, someone took our baby. She said, this is not our baby. 
Uh, my father told me that story. He heard of it when he was young, early. Right? Yeah, and uh, she always claimed it wasn't her baby that she raised. The fairy took her baby. So, but she still had a child. It was raised here, right? So. And that Some people believe that child was a was a fairy himself. But I don't know. That's what father told me anyway, right? Did you know the, the man or the woman? Uh, I knew the child. I didn't, the man and the woman were dead by the time I got old enough, right? But I knew the person. It was, it was the baby. Yeah. How did people treat that person? Well, he was much older when, when, when I was old enough to know him. So, like, so most of his siblings were gone and people around his age were gone. So, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. You know, I heard a few things. But, uh, yeah, that people used to say to him, I call him today, right? Call him a fairy. Because of it, right? And was he picked on or was he... I'm not, I wouldn't be able to speak to that because I'm not sure. Some of the older people might yeah. be able to speak to him about that. Because yeah. I was a different age, right? Yeah, yeah. And the man is dead and gone now? Yes, yes. Yeah. But that was a story your father had. Well, that's what he heard, right? Yeah, he heard, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And did you ever, there were probably... Places as well where you wouldn't cut sticks, you wouldn't go and say there was a, you, you keep away from there. Have you ever told a place like that around here? Well, if if they heard there was something, because uh, like uh, I know there was a place out to well we called the hillway, and uh, there was a man went out there one evening, and with his dog and his dog turned and left him went home. He said every here and the dog back turned, went up straight. He said he seen something that evening. He wasn't sure sure what he saw, but it was he said the ugliest thing he ever seen. It was on a stump, right? It was all hair, and he he wasn't known to be a, a nervous man, but he came back and he never went out there again. Uh, I think this, I think the name of the area was called Dick's Pet, and uh, maybe that was the Dick English who had uh, who taught the people in Branch to Fairy Town that he heard. When he lived out in a cabin in Rekov, he was, called, yeah, I think his name was Dick, and that was called Dick's Pet. But people would not go out there. They were nervous of it afterwards, right? How big was it? Uh, I don't know what he's seen. The older people might be able to tell you more about it, but I've heard that one, right? Whatever he's seen, he was, he gave him a good fright. And uh, he, he never went back out there. I've heard from a woman, and you probably know who she is as well. She said she saw them there in, into the mirror of her car a couple of years ago. She said they were small little people. Did you hear that story? Uh, I heard a story, yeah. Uh, I heard a story of a... Uh, so where was this story? What's they're taking Paris where I think it was. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I heard that story. Yeah, and when they were... Yeah, when they were going up through to the graveyard there. When they are going through the graveyard, they are all dressed alike. And it was late in the evening before dark. Yeah, and when when one of them looked back, like I had a pretty frightful white face on it, and yeah, I heard that story. Yeah, but it's, there's there's lots of stories around like that. Mm. Yeah, there's several stories here on the shore of different things. To the story about the black stag. What's that? That's the story from St. Brides, right? Yeah, that's the story that's being recorded. What? How does it go? What did What did you hear? Uh. Well, you'd have to get you get the right for story you get it from St. Bride's, right? But it's a it's a black stag they had seen people walking from Point Lancers to St. Bride's and uh, they seen a black stag. Now whatever a black stag was, I don't know. Black horse? No. I don't know. But anyway, uh where they seen this and they were told not to travel back that way. But a guy travelled there and they found him dead in the exact spot that they seen him, seen the black stag. But for me to tell you all the details of the story, no, you'd have to get it from somebody who knows it. But I've heard it, I heard of the story, right? The black stag. And could it have been a, a caribou or a moose? Or? Well, I don't know where moose in it then. I don't think moose were here then. Because yeah. moose were brought here okay. to the island, right? Yeah. I don't think there was any moose in it then. And were they travelling across country from... From, from Point Lance to... St. Bride's. Yeah, yeah. Across the marshes, yeah. And there's also a story of uh, down in Dick's Pet where a man was coming from Point Lance to uh, marry a girl in Branch. And he was found dead there. And uh, all his 
what his belongings he was carrying with him were spread all over the place. And he said there was a tree rounded by him. All the fingernails were gone off his fingers where he was trying to climb the tree to get away from something, whatever it was. And they, some people believed it was his, his wife came back to him. You know, or something happened to him because he was, he had told her on, her, you know, on a tip that she, he would never marry. But he was on his way from Point Lance to a branch to get married. I don't, I don't know the name, but I've heard the story. So there was different things that happened around, right? So the, the, the tree was found with nail. They said the tree was rind. Yeah. Barking off it. Yeah. Whatever he was trying to get away from. And when you heard this story from your own father and your neighbours. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the older people know more about it. Yeah. In the community, right? Yeah. Lights were seen here too, weren't they? Yes. Light, lights were seen here, yes. So lots of lights seen here, yeah. Yeah, well, lights were seen in branch country a lot. Yeah. But in Presentia Bay, they see the light. They call it jack o' lantern. You know, I've heard people in Presentia Bay talking about the jack o' lantern. This was a light to travel, you know, just came out of nowhere, traveled riding around the bay, and come right on, right out around the bay again. Yeah, because I, I remember a fisherman telling me a story from Presentia Bay area. <clears throat> he said they were out fishing. It was in the night time, or early in the morning before they left, and they seen the light travel riding around the bay and come on out around and they said the light came right to the end of their boat and it stopped. And they started saying the rosary in their boat and the light left again. Whatever that light was, I don't know. But it has been light seen here though. Different people have seen different things, right? Whatever it is. And light seen in the graveyard up here as well, was there? <clears throat> there was light seen in the graveyard, yes. Yes. I know the story of two people they're out walking up that way late in the night. I don't know, was it 12 or after 12? But there was a lot of lights in the graveyard. Yeah, whatever it was. And, uh, well, I, I don't know what possessed them, but they they were going to, I don't know if they went inside or not, but they were going to. Yeah, and uh, but I think the lights went out after a while. But they said there was a lot of lights. And uh, I know one of the women told the priest about it. Yeah, talked to the priest about it, so they were pretty sure that they saw lights. Because they were right next to the graveyard there, right? Whatever they seen. When he's ever told to be someone coming back looking for a prayer, he's told that. He'd say a prayer for someone when he'd see the lights. That's what we had. Well, uh, I know myself, my own experience, uh, there was a person, that grew, a neighbour that grew up close to me, and uh, <coughs> he... He went out over the cliff near Cape St. Mary's and got, and got killed. And I was working in Labrador City at the time, right? And I heard tell of him. This was back around 19, I guess, 72, 73, 74, around that time. Yeah, and, uh, but this same person saved my life when I was young because I fell off of the wharf into the sea. And only for he was there, I was, I was gone because it was right out in the open ocean. And he shoved a pole down and I grabbed the pole. And he held me long enough for the fishery guardian to come and haul me in over the wharf. And I was, that was my third time going down underneath. So I was pretty well gone. And this man saved my life. And uh, so when he got killed, my mother told me about it, right? So, and, uh, but I kept, I started dreaming of him. And I was always dreaming of him. And I told my mother when I was telling, talking to her on the phone. And she said, why don't you get a mask for him? And I sent home money and she got a mask for him, right? And after that, I stopped dreaming about him. So it was that belief too, right? Mm. Here, you get, you get a mask for people. Yeah. Yeah, or light a candle for them, right? Yeah, same as at home. Yeah. Did you have a, you had a thing, same as at home, you had a fetch here? Yes, yes. If you, saw, if you see a person that wasn't, wasn't there, it was called her fetch. Yeah, there were stories around there like that, for that, so people saw people, right? You know? Like, uh, there was a story of a person that was in the woods and they see a woodcutter, you know, you know someone from the community walking along, right? So they stopped cutting wood after a while and they go out to see him, right? But they weren't there. And he talked to him that evening, right? At, you know, because they visit each other. And they, when they went to see him, said, uh, I seen you passing out, but I, was out, I went out to talk to you, but you weren't there. No, he said, I wasn't in the woods today. So, what did he see? Do you see? That's what he got to fetch. Mm. 
and there was a story of a child uh, going along the, the footpath from a neighbor's house to another neighbor's house, and they saw her well, well they saw the mother going back into their own house, and they were singing out to the mother, and when she went in, the little girl was crying. She said, "Ma'am, so how come you wouldn't wait for me?" And her mother says, "Ronnie, I wasn't out." She said, "But you just walked into the house." She said, "No, honey, child, I've been baking bread." No, I, I, I wasn't out. So she saw her mother's fetch. So what does all about? I'm not sure, but there's lots of stories like that around here. Do you ever hear the fetch story being used that, say, a child could be out with a man and they'd be going to, say, visit someone's house or a yard, next minute the girl would break away from the man and she'd be over talking, she'd be, she'd be with her father, she'd break, up, she'd break over and talk to this man maybe with a dog and the father would come back and said, who are you talking to? I said, oh, I was talking to Kenneth Nash there. She said, Kenneth Nash has been dead. He couldn't, he's... The idea of seeing someone would reappear again, someone from, from the dead. Did we hear that in that news like that? Yeah, not, not, not here in the place though, no, but I've, uh, like, I know a story of uh, my own brother, who was very small. Like, my grandmother was dead a long time, he had never seen her, and never even, I don't think he even seen a picture of her. But one morning he woke up, her mother, and he told her, her mother, he said, he said there was a woman in the room. And he said, uh, she was standing over the bed, looking down on you. And she said, uh, you're only dreaming. And he said, no, ma'am. He said, uh, I saw seen the woman. And uh, so he, she said, describe the woman. And when he described her, and I was, you know, about her height and how she was dressed, and, you know, and she said he was describing her mother. So what he's seen, you know, not sure what he's seen, but he's seen something. So there's lots of stories like that here in the community, so. And you always call them, like at home in Wexford, we always call them ghost stories. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess, you know, probably just what he's seen was a ghost. You know, or a toddy scene anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Would your mother and father and all have told you them stories going to bed or, or as children? Would you have heard them? Well, our father told us got lots of ghost stories. That was a tradition in our house. Was before lights. Yeah. Before we got electricity, right? A lot of people, a lot of kids around... Excuse me, our age, probably a little bit older, around teenagers, used to come and sit around the house, maybe as high as 30 people, sitting around the kitchen, my father telling ghost stories, right? But the only problem was he had to bring them all home, because they were all afraid to go home then, right? He had lots of ghost stories, but people know about accidents that happened here, and people who got drowned, and, you know, where they could hear them in the night time in the house, in the pantry, moving around dishes or walking upstairs, you could hear the water gushing in their boots, yeah, yeah, you were telling me that story before. What was that story? Was well, it was about people who got drowned here, coming, you know, because, uh, like, when they came in the evening, and there were only small boats, a lot of them, and some people did get drowned here. And there was a story of, uh, you know, the people when they got drowned, well, they, weren't, they were believed in, they never had a, like, a, f- a proper funeral or anything like that, right? So they weren't resting, and there were stories of them coming back to the house. Like, they went, the, the mother and children could hear them in the night time coming in through the doors, in the pantry, moving around things, uh, walking up over steps of the stairs, can hear the water caution in the boots, and that's just, they come to the top of the stairs. And as far as they go, they'd hear that, you know, lots of times. I, I've heard that story from a woman who was, um, one of her relations had drowned, over not too far away from here. She said her mother always swore she heard that. Yes. Her husband coming back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I think my father told me that they did get the priest over. Mm. and uh, But they said there was someone seen leaning on the gate for years after that. Said the priest got him out of the house, but it was still there. You know, still there leaning on the gate. So, you know. And do you ever hear anything of maybe warnings when men would be out fishing and the seas could be turning? To, to get a warning to come back in. Did you ever hear anything like that? Uh, not, I never heard anything from this area. I just heard something from over St. Mary's Bay area that the people up off of Cape St. Mary's and they got a warning for someone that they were good to but they were, that person was already dead and that warning saved their lives. How did that go, Kenneth? Well, I, well, I was only told uh, by somebody else but I'm not quite sure but they were, they were fishing off of Cape St. Mary's and they were about to they were running some racks up to go to the keys, or the keys. Yeah, and there was somebody, 
to shout it out to them, right? To turn. The her- in the middle of nowhere, the hurt yeah. voice. Yeah, and uh, it was someone they, they recognised the voice of someone that they knew. They had someone that they were good to. That person had died. To warn them. And, and they said they were warned. Yeah. yeah, and saved their lives. Does that tradition up around, down around the Tillstone Point Lance, isn't there? St. Peter and Paul's Day of catching fish for the parish, isn't there? Yes, there was always a day for catch, catching fish for the parish. Yeah, years ago. Yeah, there was always a day. Or, like, I remember years ago, uh, all the fishermen here used to give a percentage of the fish when they're catching codfish. We'd take, up, take out so much and put it into a separate bin. All that went then was sold for the parish. Right. Yeah. But the fishermen done it here too for other purposes because when we started hockey here, playing hockey, you know, like we'd be traveling to Argentia and some of the Langlanders here used to go out and, and fish for a day for free to raise money for us, right? So the fishermen have done lots of that, you know, charity work, right? And St. Peter Paul's Day, you'd fish for the day and any money from the sale of that fish then would go to the parish, was that it? Well, that's why it used to be years ago, years yeah. Years ago, yeah, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the 29th of June. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. June, yeah. 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 I won't keep you much longer. There's a few things that you were talking to me before, whatever. A tradition. One of the traditions was, it was you were saying that a Halloween night here, there'd always be bonfires, was there? Well, yes, we used to have a bonfire on Halloween night, yes. Yeah, when we were young, uh, before lights, yeah, we would uh, have fires on the beach and we'd have tar maps made, right? Brim bags from potato sacks. Wrapped around the end of a stick, tied on, and and we'd have them dipped in tar, and we'd get some, uh, well, gasoline it was called, but we used to call it acto, because it was a coloured gasoline, and we'd get some, you know, the fishermen all had it in their, in their storage sheds for for around their boats, they had these small boats using six Acadies and eight Acadian motors in their boats, and we used that and uh, probably steal a little drop of gas from the shed here and there, right, and. Uh, so we'd have our tar maps and uh, we'd light them and we'd just run all around the community with tar maps, maybe about 25 or 30 of us. Yeah, and uh, sometimes we would uh, get a person to get a can of gas and they would, they would run like right through the community with the gas, spilling it. But when they get so far away, we'd light the gas so there'd be a fire, a ring of fire going right around the roads. Yeah, but it was a part of what we used to do. But tar maps was a thing. Like, we'd be running around singing songs and things like that, right? Well, and, and it was a bit of an evil night, too, because some people just got clotheslines, you know. Uh, I know it wasn't a good thing to be doing, but some people would, right? So uh, a lot of people took in their clotheslines on Halloween night, right? And, uh, it was devilment, was there? Devilment, yes. Yeah. That's what it was. And throwing, throwing sawdust on people's windowsills or even throwing a bit of sawdust in their porch. People used to do that, but and that, and that wasn't done in Point Lance, or was it done in? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. The it fire was, was, yeah. It was here in Branch, right? A big fire. Yeah, we had bonfires then. Not, not the or the, no, the bonfire night is known now, right? Guy Fox night. You, you didn't have that. You don't. No, have we never had that. No. Oh. This is a predominantly Catholic. Uh, well, uh, I think they used to have it over in Patrick's Cove. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, here, no, no, it was always on Halloween night. We had our fires, right? So, that's what you did on Halloween night. Yeah. Did you ever, did you wear, actually, did you wear masks at all on Halloween night? Uh, yes, we did, yes. Yeah, make them out of cardboard, you know, tie a piece of string on it, around your face, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Did you call your face a fasogony? Yes, yeah, well, yes, fasogony. Fasogony? Yes. Right. Just for your face? Yeah. My, my grandmother used to call him a wizard at home for a mask for your face for yeah. Halloween or your face was a, a wizard. You're yeah. a wizard. Tell me this, did you have all souls night here where the souls have come back? Yes, yeah. I'm not exactly sure today, but it was an all souls night. That was the night that we weren't allowed out. Yeah, when we were, we were too young to be out. All souls night. They believe in it, that you could be taken. Souls will take you. Yeah. Are we allowed to throw water out for it like that out that night? Well, well, not in, well, I suppose in my time, uh, we didn't bother much about it, but I often heard my mother saying about it, right? You know, about their traditions, and they weren't allowed to throw certain things out, right? And, uh, and we were never allowed to, if someone knocked on a door, we were never allowed to say, come in. 
And we had to go to the door, see, right, who was there. Because he said, you're, no, you could tell the devil to come in. I was saying, come in. You have to go see who it was. Yes. Go to the door. You have a, you have a father saying, no, you know, go and see who it is. No, you aren't allowed to say, come in. One thing you said your father used to do on, when he'd make the pudding, when your mother would make the pudding on Christmas. Oh, yeah, on Christmas Day, yeah, yeah. You'd go out and fire a shot when you take up the pudding. Yeah, one shot on Christmas go, Day, yeah. With the shotgun? Yeah, just to celebrate the start of Christmas. Yeah. Fire a shot. Yeah. And one thing you're saying as well, we ever told on Christmas, the bang at 12 o'clock on Christmas Eve, the animals would be kneeling. Well, people used to say it. I'd never, see, I'd never seen anything like that. Witness, but people used to say the animals would kneel in the barn, right? You know, yeah, but I... I don't, I don't know. I don't think anybody have ever seen that. <laughs> but you know, do, well, do animals do kneel? You know, every, you know, a horse and always, you know, kneel down in his in a pound most of the most time is standing, but times they lie down and same way with sheep, you know. So, tell me this. I won't keep this. The last thing I'll ask you. Do you remember here on New Year's Eve night did men fire shots? Oh yes, that's that's still a tradition here to fire shots. Yeah, they always fire one shot. To, you know, to bring, to drive out the old and bring in the new and not a shot, right? So there's two shots. Yeah, but they still fire shots here now. But they have a lot more shells nowadays, so they fire a lot more shots. Plus they got fireworks now, right? Yeah. So we never had that years ago, fireworks. But you always heard a shot at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock on the New Year's night? Yeah. And your father would go out? Yeah. Did you ever do it? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. I've done it, yeah. I haven't done it recently. My wife don't like you know, fan the guns or... Like foreign shots, right? So, I guess you're afraid of something happening. Lovely. Listen, thanks a million for your time, Kenneth. Oh, you're quite welcome. Lovely. Thanks yeah. a million. Brilliant. <laughs> Da 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 da